Good morning, everybody. Will you stand with us? Let's worship together.
morning, everybody. We're so glad that you guys are here with us right now to worship together. Today, we're going to be introducing a song. This is going to be a song that's going to be played right after the sermon, and I've been looking forward to this one. The title of the song is, This is How I Thank the Lord. And this last year, we introduced a song uh, so many of us know and love. It's the song Gratitude. And I think... There's many reasons why that song has so resonated with our church. One is because it's a beautiful song and the melody is nice and it, it's, it's great in that way. But I think another reason why that song resonates is I think there's something inside of us that recognizes that we have this God who is so good and kind and consistent and he deserves us to have this perspective shift where we say, wait, no matter what's going on in my life, there's a reason to say thank you. There's a reason to be grateful. It, it, regardless of whether the season is one where things seem easy, where we feel like our faith is strong, where, where things are working out at, at, at our work or in our families the way that we hope it would, or maybe it's the opposite and it's just a difficult season, a painful season, a season of storms, but even in the darkness to have this reminder that he's still good and there's still so much to say thank you for, like every breath that we breathe, like the fact that there was a new morning, a new heartbeat, the finances that we have and enjoy, the relationships in our life, all of it is a gift from this incredible God. And so that song just reminds us to say, hey, this is all from you, and I just wanna to return to you some, some thankfulness. Well, the song we're gonna to introduce today does the same thing. This is how I thank the Lord. But it, it focuses on a couple of aspects that I really am grateful for, and one of that is this reminder of this beautiful thing that happens in the gospel. This, this reminder that you and I were broken and we didn't have any hope outside of Jesus, but that God saw us in our brokenness and decided to come and rescue us, to redeem us, to bring us into his family. There's this concept called the great exchange that is such a beautiful, beautiful thing that our God has done for us. It's this idea here that Jesus took my sin and my shame and my brokenness and yours, and he took that off of us and put it onto his own shoulders. And on the cross, he paid for all of that sin with every drop of his blood. And in exchange, not only did he say, hey, you're forgiven, don't worry about the stuff you did. No, 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 he went so much beyond that. In exchange, he gave us his holiness, his purity. That was then put onto you and I, so that when the Father looks at you and he looks at me, he doesn't see our brokenness. He doesn't see the sins that we struggled with yesterday or five years ago, but instead he sees the purity and the holiness of his son, Jesus, when he looks at those of us who put our faith in him. It is this unbelievable miracle. And this song reminds us to say, hey, God, when I think of that, man, that gives me, what more could we say thank you for? How beautiful. The, the pre-chorus of the song, I, I love these lyrics. It says, all of my deceptions and all of my duplicity now there is no record. You assume the best of me. All of my deceptions, all of my duplicity, now there is no record. You perceive the best in me. Even when we respond to our God from a position of brokenness, from a position of, of shame, that's not how he responds to us. He gives us back kindness, compassion, understanding. And this beautiful work where he doesn't expect you and I to come to him all cleaned up and holy before we can have a relationship. That's not how our God works. Instead, while we were still sinners, Christ Jesus came to die for us. And it's through the Holy Spirit that we are transformed day in and day out. So when we get to this song at the end of today's service, I just wanna encourage us all. Let's, let's lean in to this concept of God. We're so grateful, we're so thankful. And would you teach us to express that gratitude and to be changed inside of our hearts? With that in mind, let's, let's pray together. Holy Father, we welcome you. Jesus, we welcome you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. And we just acknowledge that you're here. We acknowledge that this building is yours, that these people are yours, that those who are watching at home right now are yours. And we just, Lord, we ask that the worship we're about to do this time would be so much more than just songs but it would be really, truly hearts lifted up to the one who deserves our praise. Would you teach us something fresh today? Would you bring us so into your presence so that we could just express gratitude in every moment? I pray this in Jesus' name, amen.
start to forget all of the great things you did. When did I throw away faith for the impossible? How did I start to believe that you weren't sufficient for me? Why do I talk myself out of seeing miracles? You are more than able You are more than able you
going to look like, but God, you have it all figured out. You know exactly where we need to go, the steps we need to take. So Father, help us follow you. Help us to follow your guidance. Holy Spirit, lead us in a place where we have never seen you take us. Because God, I want to be there. I don't know about everyone in this room, but I hope they want to be there too. Holy Spirit, take us. 
Lead us to that place where we can only see your goodness. Help us to only see everything and every pathway that you have just made open for each and every one of us instead of the hardships and the difficulties and the things that the enemy tries to do to tear us down. Father, we know you are bigger. And you are so good for that. Father, we just ask today that you would just open up our hearts and our minds to continue to lay down, to keep surrendering all the burdens, all the chains, all the hard things that we are bringing into this building this morning, Father. And we just lay that at your feet and let go of it forever. Fill us with your peace. Fill us with your passion. Fill us with your joy, God, because you are a chain breaker. You are a mighty, powerful God, and we thank you so much for it today. And in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all can be seated. Would you stand with us?
city When all there is no anger You'll assume the best of me All of my perceptions All of my duplicity Now there is no record Cause you assume the best of me This is why This is why I thank the Lord for loving me He's keeping me So I will sing This is why I thank the Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for allowing us to come into this space with this community and to openly and freely express our love to you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for walking with us in every step of the way. Lord, even when we go through our trials, you are there. You are patiently waiting for us to cry out to you, our Father. What an amazing Lord, King we have. Jesus, we love you. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Thank you again for giving to Jacob's Well through our One Fund. It's your tithes, offerings, and gifts each week that make all of our ministries here possible. Sunday services, worship, core classes, groups, greenhouse youth, JW Kids, and share partners in our community. It's your support to One Fund that helps these ministers thrive and helps people take next steps towards God. You can give to the One Fund in four ways. On the mobile app, on our website giving page, at the giving boxes in the lobby, or by mailing checks to our address below. Thank you again. Okay, just a reminder, the family outdoor extravaganza is canceled today. But we do hope to see you this Wednesday during the lunch hour for Wednesday Chapel. Don't forget, it's live stream now too. And come back next Sunday right here for church at 9 and 1045 a.m. Have a great week, everyone. Hey, everyone, we got a great episode for you today. Stick around and find out why I'm doing this. Welcome to JW Kids Online and the first week of our brand new series called One Big Happy Family. You know, we all have families, right? And sometimes they're happy and sometimes we have problems and sometimes we have strong relationships with our family and sometimes we just don't get along with them. But we want our families to be healthy and loving. You know, way back when I was a kid, there was this thing called the Family Photo Album. Way before anyone had computers, phones, or tablets, you'd have to take pictures with a camera take the film out and get it developed and then put those photos in a big book. And the thing is, you know, back then cameras didn't have screens on them, so you really had no idea what your photos were gonna look like until they came back from the developers. And sometimes they look like this. Smile. Okay. So did you snap the photo before Timmy sneezed? <laughs> well, Aw, oh, look at that. What a nice dad. Giving up his hair so his family could have enough. You know, those are the types of photos that would have made you say, we paid for these? But hey, those were real families. Speaking of which, in this series, we're gonna learn about one particular family in the Bible. But first, it's game time. Hey everyone, welcome to the first round of our super fun, exciting, brand new game called It Looks So Natural. We have four contestants with us. I'm just going to introduce them, Miss Ann, Miss Anna, Miss Whitney, yeah. and Miss Danielle. Everyone clap for them, say hi. Are you two ready to play? You know it. We're it looks win. so natural. No, here's, we're how win. here's how it's going to go. Miss Whitney and Miss Ann are one team. Miss Danielle and Miss Anna are another. So what we're gonna do is Miss Ann and Miss Anna are gonna cover their faces in shaving cream. Why are they doing that? Well, remember, we're going through the book of Genesis and we're talking about this family. One of the family members was Esau. Now, if you remember, Esau 
was covered in red hair. He was red all over, big red beard and everything. Miss Whitney and Miss Danielle each have a bag of cheese balls here. Woo! And what they're gonna do is when they get shaving cream on Miss Anne and Miss Anna, they are going to stand in, or sit in front of them. Oh, I thought you were eating it for a second there. <laughs> they're gonna sit in front of them and they're gonna try to throw as many cheese balls onto the shaving cream face as they can to make a beard. And then we have a super special guest judge. He's gonna come on. He's gonna look at the red beards and he's gonna decide which ones look so natural. All right, let's get the shaving cream on you two. We'll be yeah. back in a moment. All right, we're back. They've got their shaving cream beards on. <laughs> I just love it. All right, uh, Miss Whitney, Miss Danielle, you're gonna get ready. I'm gonna get off the stage. I'm gonna put 30 seconds on the clock. And then when I say go, you're gonna throw all those cheese balls at them. And we're gonna see who can make the best beard. The best red beard. Off I go. <laughs> Are you ready? Okay, here we yes. go. Yes. And go. Not so hard. <laughs> Whoa, they're going for the multi. <laughs> Shut that approach. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> I'm winning. I'm so winning. Shut up. Shut up. I'm winning. I'm winning. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh. Oh, my goodness. No. Oh. 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 Five. Oh. Four. Oh. Three. Two. Oh. Five. An extra couple oh. seconds. We gotta get our, our super secret special judge up here. Mr. Tim, get on up here. Try not to make a mess stepping on the cheese balls. I need a shower. <laughs> you two smell lovely with the shaving cream. All right, Mr. Tim, that's the camera you're looking into. Mr. Tim is up here. Why is it Mr. Tim? Well, he's the master of the red beard. I mean, check him out. He knows what red beard should look like. So natural. Could I be your brother? You look at them, you look them over, and your favorite, you look at them and say, it looks so natural. Oh, you're not counting. Oh, no, we're not counting. We're going for the best looking. Oh, what do you think? Hey, no adjusting your beard, Miss Ann. I was just... It looks so natural. Hey! I think we should make you two go through the drive through like, I don't know. I need a picture of this. I need a picture. All right. I, apparently, we're just going to keep playing until we run out of cheese balls. So let's go back to the lesson right now. Oh. Great game. Thank you so much for playing, Miss Whitney and Miss Danielle. Miss Ann and Miss Anna, you look great in those red beards. I can't wait to play this game again. I loved it. All right, so like I said earlier, we're gonna be talking about one particular family from the Bible, and this was an important family. This was the beginnings of the nation of Israel. You remember how last week we talked about God's promises? Well, God had made a big promise to great grandpa Abraham. Let's go to Miss Ann and hear all about it. All right, so let's dive into our first story about a special family from the Bible, the story of Abraham and his son Isaac. God made a big promise, a covenant with Abraham, saying that he would have many descendants, children, as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sand on the, on the seashore or the beach. That's a lot, isn't it? Abraham and Sarah had to wait a long time for a child. Abraham was 99 years old, and Sarah was in her 90s when she became pregnant with her first child. That's pretty incredible, right? That would be like your great-great-grandma telling you that she was going to have a baby. When Isaac, their firstborn son, finally arrived, it was a joyous occasion. But as we'll soon find out, their journey had its ups and its downs. When Isaac was about your age, a special but very challenging moment happened in their story. Abraham wanted a child so bad, and he finally got the child he wanted. But then God wanted to see how much Abraham loved and trusted God. So God asked Abraham to show him how much he loved him and trusted him by asking Abraham to take his son Isaac, his only son Isaac, up to a big mountain to offer God a special sacrifice, his son Isaac. It sounds surprising or super scary. Abraham loved God and trusted him and wanted to obey him. So he took Isaac on this journey. 
and willingly trusted and obeyed God. It might have looked something like this. What do you want? Dad! What? Dad! What? Dad! What? Dad! Dad! What? Dad! What? Dad! What? Hey, Dad! What do you want? Where is the lamb for our sacrifice? Okay, maybe not. But when they reached the top of the mountain, Abraham was about to do what God asked. But God saw how much Abraham loved and trusted him and said, Stop! Don't hurt Isaac. You've shown your love and trust in me. Whew! That is a relief. God saw that Abraham was willing to do anything for him, and he provided a ram for the offering instead. So Isaac was safe and they both went back down the mountain together. Just like Abraham and Isaac faced a challenging situation, families can sometimes face tough times too. But guess what the secret ingredient is that helps families stick together and overcome difficulties? It's trust! Trust is like a superpower that helps families stay strong. Abraham and Isaac had to trust each other and trust in God, and that made all the difference. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understandings. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. We all face tricky situations. Maybe you're feeling left out of your family activities or maybe you're dealing with changes in, the home, in your home like a new sibling or maybe you just moved and you're adjusting to the new neighborhood or your school. Or maybe you're struggling with not seeing a parent as much because their work schedule changed. Or maybe your parents are having a tough time at home and arguing some. Whatever tricky situation you're facing, remember the power of trust. Talk to your family. Share your thoughts and your feelings, just like we discussed today. Talking things out and understanding each other can help create strong bonds of trust. Isaac didn't know what was going on, and he asked his dad, what was going on, dad? Where's the, where's the lamb? Isaac trusted his dad and God. And just like in Abraham and Isaac's story, when we trust and support each other, we can overcome even the toughest challenges. So let's keep building that trust in our families, being there for one another, and creating a foundation of love and support. Let's be one big happy family. Holy cow, in, in today's lesson, great grandpa and grandma had to wait a long time for what they were promised. And when somebody promises you something, you kind of have to trust that they'll keep their promise. So imagine how it would feel to wait a long time for something, finally getting it, and then being asked to give it back. I mean, that's essentially what God did. And when Abraham went along with it, he showed that he trusted God absolutely with the one person who was most important to him. And that trust is a powerful thing. And we need trust in our families, don't we? Trust creates a safe space at home. And you know, while we can trust God completely, I have to admit, sometimes it feels like you can't really trust those around us. But if we are gonna be more like Christ, then we need to make sure that we are trustworthy ourselves. So this week, let's all work on ways to become a trustworthy person. So why don't we put our hands out like this and let's pray. Thank you, Lord, that above all things, we can trust you. We can trust what you say, and we can trust what you do, that you are always good and that you do what is best for us. Thank you so much that you are a God that we can trust all the time with everything, even when it doesn't look to us like things are going well, we can trust you. Thank you so much for that. Help us to trust you more and help us to all become people that others can trust. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right. Before we go, right below me is a webpage. You can find the Devo there. Download it, print it out, do it together as a family. You'll love it. It is full of things that go along with this lesson. And we'll see you next week.
Shaving cream. Oh, yay! <laughs> 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 wow.